The game that was so hard that it was never released outside of Japan. It was so much like the first game that they had to release a completely different sequel in the rest of the world. Is it really as hard as people say it is? And was the difficulty too much for Western audiences? Let's find out. Welcome to Classic Duds, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels Review. In 1983, the video game market suffered a total crash. This was a result of countless consoles being released as well as poorly designed games at the time, and people mostly seeing video games as a dying fad. This would all change in 1985, when Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System. And due to the popularity of Super Mario Bros., it helped resurrect the gaming industry. So it was basically inevitable that Nintendo would release a sequel to the most popular game at the time. Interestingly enough, Nintendo would also release an arcade port of Super Mario Bros. entitled Versus Super Mario Bros. This was a modified version of Super Mario Bros. for the arcades and featured new stages that were much harder than they were on the NES. Nintendo had a lot of fun designing harder stages and decided to make an entire game based off them. Super Mario Bros. 2 was released on June 3rd, 1986 in Japan on the new Famicom Disk System. It ended up being the best selling game on the Famicom Disk System, selling over 2 million copies in Japan. Nintendo was ready to release the game overseas. However, things weren't going to go so smoothly. When Howard Phillips, the then playtester at Nintendo of America, tested the new game, he found the game so unfairly difficult that he went to the president of Nintendo of America, Minoru Arakawa, and demanded a more accessible sequel, and the rest of this story is subject for another video. Now, for my review of Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, I'm going to be playing off the Super Mario All-Stars port for the game footage in this video, because I didn't realize before doing research that the Famicom Disk System version is much harder for completionism, and I will go over why later on, so stick around. The game has the option where instead of the two-player mode in the previous game, you play as either Mario or Luigi. Mario has average controls just like the first game, and Luigi runs slower, jumps higher, but has much more slippery controls. I personally prefer playing as Mario, as I find using Luigi can lead to unnecessary deaths because of the slippery mechanics. One of the first things you'll notice is on World 1-1, one, one, one of the first blocks has a poison mushroom. It kills you instantly if you're small and shrinks you if you're large. Is there really a point in this though? There is no other Mario game where the poison mushroom shows, and all it adds to the game is the fact that it's a beginner's trap. Now, the first couple of worlds aren't too bad, but it still really doesn't feel like the first two worlds of a Mario game. The level structure is exactly like the first Super Mario Bros. There's the athletic stage, the underground stage, the castle stage, and the underwater stage. There are also warp zones which allow you to skip to later worlds, but there are more than there are in the first game. Wanna hear something that's fucked up though? There exist backwards warp zones. Like in 3-1, if you jump over the flagpole and keep running, you'll end up in a backwards warp zone to world 1. Making you progress backwards in the game adds nothing to the difficulty, and the only way to avoid it is either commit suicide or run out the timer. The enemy layout is also bizarre, like there are bloopers in the air in certain levels, as well as Koopa Troopas underwater, there are also paratroopers you need to take a giant leap of faith in order to bounce off of, and if they spawn in the wrong spot, you die. And later on there are Hammer Brothers that walk towards you, like there's a lot of fucked up stuff in this game. World 5 also introduces the Windstorm, which makes you have to time your jumps better. Also, once you get to this point, the challenge also isn't based on the fun levels of hard, it's just annoying. I feel like I'm playing a ROM hack that Proton John would have played, and not an actual main series Mario game. And look at 7-4 where you have to duck in the corner and it's the only way to avoid the fire bar. What about 8-4 when you have to take the correct path and also fight a decoy Bowser and the real Bowser? If you beat the game without using warps, you get access to World 9, which is a series of underwater levels, which are actually kind of easy compared to the later portions of the normal game. Now, I need to point out the main reason I chose to play this off the Super Mario All-Stars version over the original. 
In the Famicom Disk System version, in order to unlock worlds A through D, you have to beat the game eight times without using warps, and then push A and start in the title screen. In the Super Mario All-Stars port, you just go straight from world 9 to world A. Worlds A through D are a pain in the ass, let's say. They're even harder than the main adventure, and World C is probably the worst, as C3 and C4 are just graphical redesigns of 7.3 and 7.4, but a lot harder as they add platforms to the narrow spaces with fire bars in C4. The weird thing about D4 is that I find it easier than 8.4, and there's an overworld portion and an underground portion for Bowser. Though the fight with Bowser is much narrower room to fight him. If you beat worlds A through D, you just get the same ending as before, so there's really no point in playing these worlds aside from a completionist view. Especially having to play beat the game eight times in the Famicom Disk System version. Now, where do I conclude with this? Was this game too hard to be released in America? I would say some of the games that actually did come out in the NES, like Bayou Billy and Ghosts and Goblins, are probably harder than this. And especially the infamous Star Wars game for the Famicom, where Darth Vader turns into a scorpion. That one is also worse than this. Though it's clear why this game was never released out overseas for years. Video games were still seen as a passing fad in 1986, and if this sequel had been released in North America, it probably wouldn't have been well received and there was probably would have been a backlash against it. If gamers in 1986 were starting to get used to the first Super Mario Brothers, they would have been banging their heads against the wall playing this. The problem with this game isn't that it's the fun kind of hard, it's just annoying. So that concludes our Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels review. Thank you for watching.